Well, yes, Mr. Lushola Tenyola joins us next. He is the National Coordinator Alliance for Affordable Internet. Yeah, and he's also the former uh, president of Association of Telecom Companies of Nigeria. We're still on that board. So he joins us this morning to just give us his perspective on uh, developments concerning this name registration, what could happen to your SIM. Good morning, Mr. Tenyola. Thank you for joining us today. On Good the morning. Program. Well, Good there's morning, so much uh, people yeah. apprehensive. Some don't have as much information as they think. They're still gathering in different places. Information coming through from government notwithstanding. Well, as someone who is in that field, in that sector, what kind of impression do you have of what is going on? I think that, uh, good morning again to you and your viewers. I think that there are certain challenges. I think that federal government is aware of those challenges. I think uh, just prior to me coming on, you uh, showed Nigerians uh, that are struggling to achieve uh, getting an NIN so that they can link it to their SIM. I think that the challenge that the government realizes is that uh, they understand that the risk to this project is getting NIMC to be able to uh, register the 106 million Nigerians uh, or thereabouts that uh, the World Bank project has uh, supported. It's a World Bank project that wants to achieve the national identity of 150 million Nigerians. Uh, yesterday, uh, it was reported uh, that uh, the telcos had submitted uh, 47 million 800, close to 48 million, uh, and they still need to be verified by NIMSI. Uh, and typically, uh, on average, at best, uh, a, a response from NIMSI takes about one week uh, from the back end to verify a submitted NIM. Uh, so uh, whilst they're doing their verification, those NINs that have been submitted by the telcos may be rejected. Uh, so we really are looking at a uh, sticky point of about 47, maybe 45 million NINs uh, by the end of this month. And why do I state this? Is because if you already have a NIN, you are fortunate. I think that the uh, situation is that there are people who are panicking, uh, trying to achieve uh, the deadline of the 5th of, no of, of February, uh, sorry, the 9th of February, I beg your pardon. Um, and I think that the cry for an extension is valid because if you are queuing up or rushing uh, to get a NIN, um, obviously the applications that are available on, uh, from the agency uh, just satisfies pre-enrollment. But if the reality is that there isn't enough infrastructure, uh, and I think that the NIMC has identified that they have a thousand or thereabouts enrollment centers uh, with the addition of us 173 agents. It's a shortfall for what the World Bank expects of 4,000 outlets. So you know that those that are not able to use these channels, either because of affordability issues or digital literacy issues, will queue up. Uh, because they don't know, they don't understand the process. They they need assistance from government to be able to get their NIN. And I think those who are trying to get their NIN and may have proof that they've attempted to get an NIN should not be punished if they own a SIM or SIMs. Uh, I think that uh, in this day and age, we should have a, a program like this. A national identity number should be rolled out, but it should also consider the humane side and the reality of the constraints and the idiosyncratic nature of our environment. Uh, I think that's the situation right now. I believe that government will review all information and inputs uh, and then take a decision whether they're going to uh, shift that date uh, and then set another date. So it gives every Nigerian and legible residents an opportunity to uh, register for an in, whether they queue up or they use uh, the electronic channels. There's so much to unpack in all that you have said now here, um, uh, Mr. Tenyala, but uh, if you could uh, expatiate a little on that World Bank ambit. I'm wondering if we needed the World Bank or that kind of pressure to do the need for. What's, what's the World Bank got to do with Nigerians being, you know, 
numbered by their government to, in order to be able to give them the correct social amenities they need? Well, I think that you need to understand that we as a country need to be able to plan. Um, I think you mentioned uh, the poverty level, uh, and I think that estimates may range from 88 million to 100 million Nigerians. We have an estimated population of 200 million or thereabouts. Um, our population is growing at 3% per year. Uh, we need to be able to plan not only for social reasons, but economic reasons. And I think that, uh, I, I don't think that there's a problem with various IDs. You know, people mention that they have BVN, they have the FRSC, uh, you have your international passport and your driver license. I think that these agencies have every right to uh, have an identity. Um, and I think those identities have worked to a degree, including the BVN. Um, what they need to do is harmonize this information because uh, it is very important to know that the Nigerian Population Commission should have a handle on who is a true Nigerian or who is a resident in Nigeria and a concrete uh, consensus. Uh, so we understand exactly how many people are in the country so that the government can plan and so that even the uh, private sector can plan so that there is an idea as to the direction Nigeria has taken. And remember, the digital economy that we are transforming to uh, expects that services rendered by government to the citizens are going to the right people. And the only way you can do that is to create a unique idea. So the NIN is a great initiative. Um, why the World Bank is involved, uh, that's what they do. They assist countries that need assistance. And I believe that the uh, national identity project has been going on for a number of years, I, I believe from 2012. Uh, I think the NIMSI Act of 2007 just demonstrates that the laws were there, but uh, possibly there have been different uh, administrations of government who have attempted to achieve uh, the registration or unique registrations of Nigerians and, and have not been able to achieve that. Uh, the government has picked this up. I remember there were media. Uh, correspondence on this matter in 2018. So it's not a new thing. I think that, you know, the deadline uh, is a deadline and, and may not be a deadline because really it is for government to ensure that all its citizens have had an opportunity to register for uh, a NIN uh, and that any services that they currently are using uh, before they had a NIN should not be just disconnected. That's not the way to go about things. Logically, you have to serve the Nigerian citizens and not disenfranchise them. And I think the World Bank wouldn't support uh, a project of theirs being associated with disenfranchised Nigerians. So the deadline itself has to be moved. It has to be extended. It has to be based on science and data. And when I mean science, scientific evidence to prove that you know, the Nigerian government has done everything it can uh, to ensure that uh, Nigerians can achieve achieving an end, which is their human rights. Well, perhaps the World Bank, well, no, the federal government is racing against time because the, the bracket of time given by the World Bank is three years to, to perform this activity. But then um, one wonders why with more than 200 licensed agents, why people always only prefer to go to NIMSI offices. Now, the question I'd like you to address, Mr. Tenula, is this. People have their phone numbers already. And a good number of people who have phone numbers do not have NINs. Uh, I thought that um, it, it would have been a no-brainer to say, let people go to their telecom subscribers who already collect their bio data anyway. Go to your, bio, you know, uh, your, your telecom service provider to register for your NIN. Wouldn't that have been easier than people thronging the NIMSI offices alone? Um, the telecoms uh, ecosystem uh, is about making calls and allowing uh, consumers to uh, get access to the internet. Um, you know, we uh, as a body, uh, our founder founded the World Wide Web. And that was to make it easier. It introduced the technology to make life easier. So the telecoms industry in Nigeria 
has put itself in a position to assist for Nigerians to acquire an NIN. Remember, in other jurisdictions, it is government that actually performs this task, and only government. Yes, they might outsource it to the private sectors, but it is purely government after the private sector uh, 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 participants have been security cleared. So in this instance, what we have seen is that government has tried. They've tried and tried and tried over the years and have only managed, as we have found out yesterday, to register 47.8 million Nigerians. In the past, our population wasn't as great as it is now. So if we have an estimated population of 200 million, you can see that we're skewing away from those that have identities to a fraction of the population. And we'll behold, if we continue on this trajectory, we will get to 2015 and we will have a huge gap uh, because our population may go towards 300 million uh, and we may not have registered even the 150 million that the World Bank expects. That's where the risk is. How, how do we expedite and scale up the ability to register all these millions of Nigerians. And the only way to do that is to have infrastructure. So NIMSI needs the support of the telecoms industry because they've done something like this with the SIM registration um, to be able to perform this task. I remember SIM registration happened over a number of years. Any projects that involves data at, of this size will require a lot of infrastructure, we require funds, and we require a political will to achieve it. And I think at the moment, uh, government is determined to try and achieve a, a result for this project, because essentially we're moving into a digital just, economy. Just, just a moment. The question I'm asking straight up is, do the telecoms, to the telecom companies, do they have authority in the license given to them as licensed agents of the federal government through NIMSI and the rest of them, do they have authority to register people who do not have NINs to give them NIM, the national identity numbers, courtesy of the federal government? Okay, I didn't understand your question, but since you've had asked a direct question, yes, because they applied for the data capture licenses under the NIMSI Act of 2007. So, so they're in one hand, as a telecoms company, and in the second, they're acting as an agent of NIMSI to capture data. So, so essentially, you're saying, one moment, Ess essentially, essentially, you're saying that the listener and the viewer right now can go to a telecom company, the listener and the viewer who does not have a national identity number, rather than go to an NIMC office where it's crowded, can go to a telecom service experience center and get a national identity number as opposed to going to the NIMC office. Is that what you're saying? That's the intention of the licenses that they have got. And I believe there's a, not in addition to the telecoms companies, there are 173 agents as well Correct. that NIMC has authorized and approved to assist in data capture. Correct. Correct. But why is it that, uh, because it would seem like for now, the telcos are only interested in linking SIM to NIN and not giving fresh uh, national identity numbers to people? Well, it's very obvious that when the list of approved agents was actually uh, released by government, that was the tail end of last year, uh, that they needed to acquire the data capturing equipment that meets the NIMSI spec. So some have decided to use uh, certain equipment until the arrival of that equipment that they require. And I think it's the 10 finger digit capture equipment. Um, there are agents that have uh, been able to import those equipment and are installing those equipments. Um, they will advertise to either their customer base or to the general public when they will be able to perform that data capturing task. But it's important to note that uh, the time of this project is what we are discussing. Uh, and the time and timing are critical because we have a number of risks associated to the ability to achieve the February 9th uh, deadline. And I think with all factors being born and being considered, uh, an informed decision would suggest that the deadline should be moved 
to a more appropriate timing to give the telcos and the other agents a chance to assist NIMSI in being able to achieve the registration of 150 million Nigerians under the World, under the World Bank project. The federal government, even on the front pages of the dailies this morning, has continued to insist that it's February 9, the deadline is February 9. The implication is, for which reason people throng the NIMSI offices, the implication is that the lines of these people will be blocked as the threat or the condition has been given by the federal government. What do you see happening from February 9 going forward? Do you see the SIMs being blocked or do you see an extension? Um, I think that government needs to weigh up the balancing acts. Uh, they're on the tightrope and the knife edge. You have a situation where uh, the security issue has been put above economic issues. And I think that when you look at our economy right now that is struggling uh, in a recession, and you have an industry that is contributing significantly to GDP, uh, and a possibility of disconnecting. I think if you look at the figures that government presented and the assumptions that they've made, there's a gap of maybe 29 million SIMs in circulation that might be disconnected. I don't think government will make a decision to, do, to sweepingly disconnect 29 million SIMs. I think that would almost be suicidal. Uh, I also believe that it will impact greatly, not only our sector by uh, 43 to 51% drop in revenues uh, overnight in, in within a month uh, after the 10th of February. Uh, but it will also have a ripple effect on other sectors that depend on this enabling sector. Uh, they depend on connections to our industry. Uh, those connections are by the SIM. Uh, and if those SIMs are inadvertently disconnected because there's no correlation to an NIN, I just imagine if you have a POS and uh, you expect that POS to have an NI, NIM just because an individual can't actually link it or has forgotten the number, then there's a ripple effect. So I think government has to consider the realities. And the realities is that you can't actually disconnect SIMs until you complete the NIM project. And the NIM project expects every Nigerian to have had an opportunity to actually register for the NIN. And if they have had an opportunity to register, that's one thing. If they tried to uh, register for the NIN and because of the, uh, the, the, the constraints that we have in terms of infrastructure in the NIMSI system, then they shouldn't be punished and there shouldn't be any disconnect. So I think government will review and most than likely extend rather than, uh, well, commit suicide. Hey, Mr. Tenola. Mm. Just wondering, you know, what it would take to decentralize it and make sure that people are not crowded uh, in the way that they currently are at these registration centers. But while you mull the answer to that question, I'm wondering, have you been able to uh, get any word or, you know, see any rationale behind uh, the planned registration of foreigners, especially foreign diplomats who will be in the country longer than two years? That's a good one, Mope, and uh, happy to hear to you. I'll take the back end of that question. I don't understand it. I, I really don't. Um, uh, my concern, and, and I think we need to put this out there, um, generally, foreigners come into this country. Uh, we are a nation that uh, receives foreigners uh, for business. There are foreigners amongst us. Um, so this adage where you've clipped it or pegged it at two years is an interesting one for me because uh, those foreigners are not citizens of Nigeria. Uh, they hold foreign passports. Uh, those are legitimate identity, uh, IDs, by the way. Uh, and even some Nigerians uh, hold also, also foreign passports. So the NIM project is either a national identity project or it's a, an ID project per se uh, for other reasons. So government has to answer that re uh, the, the, the reason why they are trying to implement uh, a NIMSTI Act of 2007, uh, because it doesn't really make sense. But I mean, I'm sure government understands why they want to impose NINs on uh, diplomats, simply for the fact that diplomats might be concerned that their legitimate phone numbers that they've registered in Nigeria using their foreign passports may be disconnected as uh, your colleagues have uh, insisted that government 
would not shift the date of the 9th of February. I would like to see that happen. So, you know, the, the problem that government faces is that they might start to disconnect SIMs uh, of very important people and, and uh, people who operate in Nigeria um, inadvertently. And I think that is obviously a reputational risk. Uh, on the other uh, question, I can't really answer uh, for NIMSI. I'll be honest with you, Mope. Um, they are the ones who uh, are driving this project. They're the ones who should be communicating effectively with Nigerians on how they would like to see this project move forward. And I think government has to be empathetic to uh, the this, this situation. We have 47.8 million Nigerians that have NINs. We have a target of 150 million Nigerians. I mean, you just do the maths. The gap is just too wide. Um, you know, you need a huge amount of funding and infrastructure put in place in between now and February the 9th that both are not available um, in, in the best of intentions. The funding is not going to come in between now and three weeks to fund a huge expansion of infrastructure that wasn't there in the last eight years. Mm. I have more questions for you, but I understand that we have to go to break now. Uh, but when we come back, I'll be very interested in your take. In some countries, for instance, in India, uh, you cannot get a SIM card unless you present your passport, your international passport. If the idea behind foreign diplomats, uh, you know, getting a NIN was because of their SIM card, doesn't it just make sense uh, for them to use the, the numbers on the international passports to register and, you know, ensure that your SIMs are secure? Agree. Um, I've, I've traveled out of this country. I've used my Nigerian passport to get a SIM in another country along ECOWAS. So, you know, Mope, there are many reasons for decisions to be made. We just give data, we provide the insights, and it's for government to make the decisions. And I hope that they're informed decisions and rational as well. Well, let's go to break now. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Please stay with us. Panic, tiredness, and anguish. These are what you can see on the faces of these Nigerians at the Lagos office of NIMSI as the deadline for the NIN SIM card linkage elapses. In the heat of the moment, amid the wait and struggle, this man seen here talking to the entrance keeper isn't wearing his face mask properly, thereby causing a grave danger to everyone around him. Not only that, there is no adherence to social distancing and other COVID-19 protocols. Only few people are seen wearing their face masks. From the gate up down to this place, I know what I passed through before they could even allow me to enter. It is, if you go outside and, and, and see the crowd in the gates, everybody's just like, everybody's are. Ah, even the ones that has, nobody knows who has disease and who does not have disease. You just contact everything, which is not nice. The stages are very, very stressful. The stages are very, very stressful. I will not, I will, I will not lie. They need to work on this. This is, this is not the way. Go to, do, just go to other developed countries. You cannot see this kind of crowd trying to get an important, an important um, identi uh, identity card or whatever. You can't get this kind of crowd. It's not nice. To many, the registration process is viewed as a cumbersome procedure, and many are already calling on the federal government to extend the deadline to enable Nigerians complete the NIN registration. This thing is not normal. We are, we are just saying so free every day by day. Now I have been booked, everything has been corrected. I pay 15,161 naira, 25 kobo, for only changing of dates of debt. That I was not the one that made that mistake. That was not the one that made that same mistake. I paid the money. Got into this place, you need to queue and be booked for so, for like three weeks. I've been coming here, this is like three, this is the like third week. After everything, after the registration and everything, they will now book me for another day. I will come in six weeks' time to collect the original copy. It's not the main ID card, the original copy. The NIN registration process, which commenced in December, according to the government, is aimed at improving integrity and transparency of SIM registration processes and consolidate records 
of Nigerians. Well, that report we saw there was really hard to watch. I mean, first and foremost, you saw an elderly man uh, who was trying to make his way, pushing literally, and at some point his mask was down. He, his mask wasn't worn properly. And he was right in the face of a security officer who was trying to prevent him from coming in. So you have to ask what special considerations have been given to those who could be vulnerable? For instance, the elderly, uh, nursing mothers, uh, another example, or those who have underlying health issues. Because we mustn't forget that we are in the era of COVID. And much as people have been asked to wear their masks, uh, there are questions as to how we're making it. We're giving special considerations to these classes of people. Shouldn't we have special centers for them, for instance? Uh... A good question, Mokwe, again. Um, I can't speak on behalf of government, but you are spot on. Uh, and this is the, the, this is the issue. Um, just think of those in the rural areas, the villages, your loved ones, grandparents, grandfathers, aged, those that are suffering below the poverty line, struggling to have a living. And they can only communicate with you with a SIM card. In some cases, they don't own a mobile device. They have to walk kilometers to a nearest place where there might be a mobile signal in a business center. They put their SIM in the phone and they call you. Maybe to ask for money, maybe just to see how you are. NIMSI at the moment doesn't have facilities in those areas. Yes, reactively, they've put in place mobile units, I believe. We have 774 communities around Nigeria. And some of those communities I've just described or illustrated to you the realities. They live on the lifeline of a SIM card to change their lives, to communicate with the outside world. Just because they're not able to get to a NIMSI center. And if they get there, they may not have, as you said, the facilities to aid them in registering. We need to have a glistening government that understands the pains that the Nigerians are going through because it's not their fault that they're not able to register for them. Very, very and correct, then have Mr. Tenola. Yeah. Connected would be yeah. very devastating yeah. to. Perhaps that's why, you know, the question continues as to maybe the telcos should be, should also play that role of giving people their names. But then there is a challenge that I think you should be able to answer to, which is the fact that a, num a good number of people have complained that when they, when they go to their telecom service providers, especially those who ported from one network to another, they are unable to. Um, for instance, I have a SIM that I ported from one network to another. So from that, I go to this other network that I ported to, and they tell me that my SIM, that I, my, my data is not with them. Consequently, that number, that national identity number cannot be used for me. I go back to my uh, former telco, they tell me they don't have my data anymore because I ported from them. How do you explain that? You know, you've reached or put yourself in a situation where it's cumbersome. The porting number process, uh, MMP, mobile number portability of, uh, process, is separate from this SIM NIN registration. Let me, let me say something uh, that might clarify. The SIM registration database as is and the porting database should be synchronized. Um, I've done the same as you, um, my dear brother, uh, and I must say that uh, the number I've ported to the network is the network I go to. Uh, I don't need to mention their names, and they are able to see my records. However, you might be in a situation, I don't want to speak on their behalf because I'm not the customer service center for any of the operators, but you might be in a situation where you need to escalate your case to both operators in writing to state your experience and the pains you're going through. So it's recorded. 
And if that doesn't suffice, because there's a clock ticking, then register that with NCC, call in 622. And therefore you have evidence that you've tried to do the need for. So when the time comes, if government doesn't move the deadline, then you should be able to seek recompensation. Um, you know, that's why I said that this is a logistics risk and an economic risk. It's an economic risk to the telco ecosystem because if you disconnect users who have prepaid on their accounts, then you have to refund those accounts that have been prepaid. And that's not something what the industry wants to go through. So they will do everything to ensure that any case, as I said, your composite case is an exception, but generally cases are addressed needfully. Well, it, it is it's, important uh, to it almost sounds as if they are trying to punish you for potting. <laughs> But we have to thank you for. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> why did you pot? Well, you. next time. <laughs> now nah, look at what they got himself no, into. No, no. There's nothing wrong with the porting system. There's nothing wrong with the porting yeah, system. Yeah, but, but the way it looks now, look at the harrowing experiences that people are going through. Anyway. I, I appreciate the. I empathize with your situation. I give you a route to go. And that's the best I can do, and I wish you luck, you know. We appreciate you. that, and we thank you for talking to us, Mr. Ulushala Tenyola, National, uh, National Coordinator Alliance for Affordable Internet, hoping that this doesn't jeopardize exactly. affordability of the internet. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.